Trick Williams would actually put over Carmelo Hayes tonight after winning at Stand and Deliver. He would say that Carmelo Hayes is actually him. But he would say that his journey now takes him to slay the Mad Dragon. He asked for an NXT title match. Ilya Dragunov said no. But then he gave a condition. In two weeks' time at spring break in, they'll do the match. But if Trick loses, he leaves NXT. Trick would accept the challenge before being attacked by Carmelo Hayes. Hayes would then declare that next week they're going to fight again in a steel cage before Trick's big title match. Is Carmelo Hayes going to cost Trick Williams his entire NXT career? Obviously, that would mean probably a call-up for Trick, but we think that's going to happen for Dragunov as well. So lots to play for in the coming weeks. This is Things You Might Have Missed. From NXT, make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button too. Roxanne Perez would start off the show, the new NXT Women's Champion, very quickly saying that her win was just this. But the only way she's going to lose that belt is if she surrenders it because she's going to Raw or SmackDown in the WWE Draft. Lyra Valkyria, the former champion, would come out and demand a rematch before she was interrupted by Tatum Paxley. I really like this because, I don't know if you know, they actually built like a tunnel in like under the stands into that little area for Tatum to pop out of. I thought that was really cool. Tatum would ask Lyra if she's actually okay. And after months of this bizarre relationship, it would break down. As Tatum Paxley would say, are you really okay? And then grab Lyra throwing her into the still stairs and then just screaming, it's not yours anymore. Oh, Tatum Paxley turns heel. I, I kind of expected this to happen at Stand and Deliver. I expected Tatum to cost Lyra the match, like, completely. So this wasn't a shock, but I'm interested to see where this feud goes. Natalia would come out, though, confronting Roxanne Perez. They did tease this on Raw and demand a women's title match. Ava would make it official. There was times during their match I thought Natalia could have actually won it. But no, it wasn't to be because of Lola Vice. Lola Vice, who Natty's been feuding with, come out delivering a really weird kick to the leg, which basically knocked Natalia out somehow. And then obviously Roxanne Pop Rocks picked up the win, retains the NXT women's title. A surprise appearance by the Viking Raider. Ivar tonight. This was really cool. Ivar stepping up to Oberfemi, the North American champion. A very rare promo from Ivar. You know what? He's really good, man. I, I, I don't know why you don't let him talk more often. It was decent. And of course, a few moves later, Ivar would leave Oberfemi laying. Ivar going for the North American title. Do you think he could win? Kiana James and Izzy Dane were victorious tonight in tag team action against Fallon Henley and Kalani Jordan. I've got to give a shout out to Kalani. That over the top rope corkscrew press was insane looking. Absolutely love that. They build Kalani as the fastest rising female superstar. Her selling ability tonight was top notch. No need to disagree. I've got to shout out Izzy Dane as well. This move, oh my God, Izzy Dane delivered a modified abdominal stretch. And look at the way she's pulling back on the right leg of Kalani Jordan. That looks like it's really painful. Love that. Javon Evans would debut this week on NXT. Obviously, he's had a few matches on NXT Level Up. Very impressive. They showed like a highlight package video for him prior to the match and Wow, if you've never seen this kid wrestle before, now, well, guess what? You're impressed, right? He's like he's made out of rubber. He just jumps insane distances. The way he springs off the rope, using just the top rope to bounce, his finishing move, all of it, just absolute the total package. Looks like a star, and I think NXT's going to make him one. At Stand and Deliver, WWE NXT announced their brand new championship. The women's North American title. We don't know when this title's going to be introduced. I think we might have to wait a while. Obviously, call-ups and stuff. You don't want to start a tournament and then people go to the main roster, you know? 
JC Jane would drop a bombshell on Thea Hale tonight as she would reveal the reason for the, all the issues that Chase U had was Thea Hale's fault. Thea Hale wrestled a match a long time ago for the title that Andre Chase would throw the towel in. And he bet money, a lot of money, on Thea winning. So he did the towel throwing spot, we thought, because, you know, he's a teacher, he just liked it, but no, he actually cared. He cared he more than money about Thea Hale. And then she felt guilty. Ah, oh, ah, oh, problems in Chase U just continue, didn't they? It just reminds me all the time that I wasn't able to get the calendar. And now, I probably never will. Damn it! WWE would announce that over 700 million views was achieved this weekend for WrestleMania across social media. That is insane. I think 600 million was probably me watching Cody win the title. Luca Cruz, Stefino and Stax of the D'Angelo family defeated No Quarter Catch Crew tonight. Now, the big story here with No Quarter Catch Crew, they were shown on screen multiple times. No Drew Gulak. And obviously, if you look at the graphic behind, it's not looking good for Drew Gulak, is it? It looks like he's been erased from this group. It looks like he's away from TV, obviously, right now. There were some really serious allegations made by Rowdy Ronda Rousey against Drew Gulak. And obviously, since then, Drew Gulak has put out a tweet. People have opinions. People share those opinions. WWE look like they've erased Drew Gulak. Rich Holland wanted to apologise to Joe Gacy, but Joe Gacy, I think inadvertently, sort of mocked him again. And he would storm off and storm into the LWO, who refused to buy this apology tour of Ridge Holland. And then, well, accidents follow Ridge around, don't they? And Cruz del Toro's hand got caught in the doorway as Ridge was leaving. Now... They said it wasn't an accident, but it did look like an accident, to be fair. Poor Ridge, man. But we're back to where we were before. Obviously, Ridge didn't leave NXT. He showed up and attacked Joe Gacy at Stand and Deliver. Be interesting to see what's next for Ridge Holland. The main event saw Axiom and Nathan Fraser get one more shot at the NXT Tag Team Titles versus the Wolf Dogs. Obviously, they lost at Stand and Deliver. This match meant everything to them because if they lost... They could never go for the tag team titles as a team ever again. After a near miscommunication between the Wolf Dogs, it would be a Phoenix Splash taking advantage for Nathan and Axiom, the supersonic duo, to win the NXT Tag Team Gold. Congratulations, new tag team champs. What the hell happened next, though, as Karrion Cross emerged with the Authors of Pain... The final testament left the new tag champs laying AOP, holding up the tag team gold, making their intentions clear. I'm all for this faction having a quick run in NXT. That's pretty cool. Really fun show tonight. Lots of storytelling, lots of surprises. Exactly what it should be. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I like to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on notifications. Like the video. Share the video. And as always, I'll catch you next time. Peace!